our panel here is looking at the role of, of development partners in the challenge of development effectiveness. Without a systemic approach at the global level, also covering trade issues, and, um, um, and uh, uh, the respective framework conditions at the national level, also from a legislative point of view, when it comes to land tenure, we will not make progress also in uh, creating realistic opportunities for the magnitude of the problem. That is the sense of urgency which comes out of all our discussions for me. And be behind or below all these are our nice little and wonderful programs. I'm happy that we have them, but I'm too realistic that if we do not scale up and if we do not come up with strategic partnerships, we will fail and we will not achieve the sustainable development goals. I think it is really important to have that conversation as you mentioned uh, too. Uh, is because we are talking about actually a system in which we want to include African countries, Africa, African youth. Everybody is talking about including them into a system. But what is actually the system, the globalization as we have known till now, the capitalist system as we have known till now, actually what is that introdu uh, uh, producing? It produces also poverty. It produces inequality. We heard a lot about what African countries should do. But the question is, what should we do? I do want us to have maybe a bit more of a positive, uh, more hopeful frame to some of the, the conversations that we're having. Young people are really driving change on the continent. And I think the question needs to be, and the whole conversation needs to be less about, you know, how can we support young people as, as, as poor beneficiaries? Rather, how do we almost get out of the way and support the, the dynamism and the, the excitement that's happening, particularly on the continent? But I think a lot of what we need to think about doing is, um, you know, focus on that enabling environment. This is a really important message is to ensure as we do with producers, as we do with others, we need to involve the youth directly and we need to involve them in ways that meet their needs so we need to meet them on their terms on their turf just as we should be doing with farmers and with other actors in this sphere and finally what I hear a lot about when I have these conversations in finance spheres is de-risking and all that I ever hear is de-risking the investors I would really encourage us to be thinking about ways to de-risk the farmers themselves. They're the ones, farmers are the ultimate entrepreneurs. They face huge risks, they're managing these risks all of the time. We have to, I will end with, a, with an image, it's one of a caravan. There is a saying that a caravan always goes at the speed of the slowest camel. Who is the smallest cow, uh, slowest camel? Is it a small for the farm or is it government? But unless we are able to manage, and this is why the private sector, the win-win scenario are important. Can we come up with revenue sharing model that acknowledge the importance of recognizing the right of the different group and is consistent with our project to build a successful and a resilient and a rich society? I think that's the challenge we have. Thank you very much. As you see, it was wide-ranging, eclectic, and, but always interesting. But if I had to pick up on one theme, um, what's become clear is the multi-sectoral, multi-level nature of this systemic change at an appropriate scale is, is what the challenge is. And then we go back to the development effectiveness, but the primary question is that keeps coming back and back is the leadership that has to come from the member states from the government, from the national government.